When Lucas was young, I thought he had high functioning autism because he was included in typical toddler preschool classes and was warm and cuddly with me. But now most would consider Lucas low functioning. And here's the thing, after two decades in the autism world, I really don't like the terms high functioning and low functioning. So today I'm gonna to get on my soapbox about these terms and tell you how to tell if it matters and what to do about high functioning versus low functioning autism. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, best-selling author, and online course creator. Each week I provide you with some of my ideas about turning autism around. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that now. As I said, when Lucas was really young, I didn't think he had autism at all. And I was sure that if he was diagnosed with autism, it would be very mild autism. That kept me in denial for over a year, which was a very bad thing. I did uh, do a video blog on denial very many months ago, so you may wanna check that out now. Even after Lucas was diagnosed with autism, with moderate to severe autism, one day before his third birthday, I still considered him to be high functioning because he was going to typical preschool with a shadow. He wasn't having many problem behaviors or self-stim behaviors. And then as Lucas got older, when he was about six or seven years old, I thought he was kind of in the middle of the spectrum, but definitely not low functioning. That was until one day when I went to look at an approved private ABA school for Lucas. And this is where I saw a little boy, I'll call him um, Nathan, who I didn't know his name. It was circle time at this ABA school. And there was a boy sitting there and he flopped on the ground in the middle of, of story time and was throwing a tantrum. and. I wasn't a behavior analyst at this point, so I was just kind of looking on and thinking, you know, Lucas was used to going to typical preschool. He was enrolled in our public school kindergarten program with a shadow, with a special education teacher. He was still doing a home program for half the day. So in my mind, even though he had moderate severe autism and wasn't conversational, I thought this boy was much lower functioning and I was kind of like thinking, that's it, Lucas does not belong here. I want him in, in typical, you know, regular uh, public school where he can get role modeling. So the director talked to me at the end of my short one hour visit and she asked me if I thought this was a good fit for Lucas. And I told her that I thought Lucas was higher functioning than the kids I saw there. And she um, told me that Nathan, who had flopped to the ground um, during story time, was actually reading uh, almost at grade level and had much more language than Lucas did. And at that point, I really, I had an aha moment and I really realized that it wasn't fair to call Lucas high functioning or low functioning or to call this boy Nathan high functioning or low functioning because within each child are their strengths and their needs. Lucas blended into the community a lot better, he blended into public school a lot better because he didn't throw major tantrums or have problem behaviors to that extent. He had language needs and he had academic needs and a bunch of other needs. But in terms of like taking him out into the community, taking him to a restaurant, to a pool, on an airplane, those made look, Lucas look a little bit more uh, higher, like, higher functioning than, than um, other children who were more advanced in other different areas. And at this point I thought it really, if you were a teacher and you had six or eight kids with autism in your classroom and you were told to line them up in terms of who's highest functioning and who's lowest functioning, you would actually have a really hard time because are we talking about problem behaviors? Are we talking about going into the community? Are we talking about academics? 
language, um, just a host of, of things that kids have issues with. Some kids are more mild mannered like Lucas and, and blend in more while other kids have high um, problem behaviors and those sorts of things. So within each child are their strengths and needs. And at this point, I realized it was impossible to really tell if a child had high functioning or low functioning autism, especially as they were younger. You know, over the years, I've, I've really realized that a lot of parents want to know that their two-year-old, or even say their two-year-old, oh, my two-year-old just has high-functioning autism, or, you know, you can't tell how a two-year-old is going to be at eight or 18. And the biggest thing I've learned over the years is you need to treat early autism like the worst case of autism you've ever seen in order to give that your child or your client the best outcome possible. So I did do another video blog a few months ago on can you predict how a two-year-old is going to be at age eight and so you may want to check that out. But over the years this high functioning, low functioning has really been a blurry line for me and when people say oh my son just has high functioning autism or just has Asperger's I think that's really um, a disservice to the child it, and I think for other moms who kids are more impaired it's kind of like comparing cancer like you may have a better prognosis having thyroid cancer than pancreatic cancer but cancer is still life-altering and you never know how everyone and how you are going to do. So um, I think the, the whole high functioning, low functioning gets even more complicated. In general, when people say kids have high functioning autism, they tend to mean that the child has full language, are conversational. Many times these high functioning kids can be included in general education settings and may be high enough functioning to learn how to drive, go to college, perhaps get married. But with high functioning autism also comes some comorbid um, conditions like anxiety at a higher rate and depression and those sorts of things. So it's, it, it comes with additional stress at many times. Low functioning, um, many people when they use that term tend to think of kids that also have intellectual disability in addition to their autism. They might have little to no communication or language. Um, they're less likely to be fully included and now the DSM-5, which gives a diagnosis uh, criteria for autism, has three levels of ASD. Level one is more mild autism, higher functioning, and level three would be kids like Lucas who need very substantial re support. But over time, these levels could change. You could start out as a level three, and with the right therapy, you could move into level one. I've seen this many times with my own eyes. But obviously, there's a whole spectrum in between going to college and driving a car and being completely in need of constant support and supervision. Some high functioning kids are fully conversational, but they can't hold a job due to that anxiety or depression. While there's some low functioning kids who um, grow up and are gainfully employed and happy living with only um, some minor support. In the end, it doesn't matter if you call someone high functioning or low functioning. It's about each child or adult with autism reaching their fullest potential and using their strengths to bring up their weaknesses, improving those deficits and helping each child be as safe, as independent and as happy as possible, reaching their fullest potential always. And when kids are really young, maybe not diagnosed with autism or newly diagnosed, it's impossible to tell how they are going to do long term. So as I said earlier, it's best to treat autism aggressively, even if you think it's very mild. 
whenever, wherever you're watching this video blog, I would love it if you would leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and share this video with others who might benefit. And to learn more, you can go to marybarbera.com forward slash workshops for a free workshop to help you get started turning autism around. I'll see you right here next week.